Hey guys, how's it going? Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be jumping back into DaVinci Resolve to do a call out effect similar to this. It's something a lot of you have been asking for and it is a really valuable tool to have in your effects library to be able to just pop out whenever you need it, whether you're doing product review videos. It's a really neat effect to have in your library. So we're gonna jump into Resolve now and show you how to make this really basic call out effect. All right guys, so we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve now to create this effect. It's pretty easy. There are a few little parts to it, but creating the effect is pretty, pretty simple. All right, so we're gonna create a new project. We're gonna call it basic, <laughs> basic call out once I learn how to spell. And what we're going to do is import some footage. So a bit of media that we want to track. So I'm gonna import this little clip here I have of a Ronin S. Don't worry about changing the frame rate. So we've got this footage here of the Ronin S. Now I don't wanna track the whole bit for this, so we're gonna just go in, and we're gonna go out, and just drag the video down onto that timeline like so. And with the bit of footage select, we're gonna jump into Fusion. And so now we have the media in and media out. We're gonna to wanna to track this bit of footage. So starting at the start of the footage, which is at frame 26 with the media in node selected, we're gonna hit shift space, add a tracker node. And if you aren't familiar with Fusion, you can click up the top here where I have a overview of the Fusion window. So with the tracker, we're going to find a nice point to track and I think Ooh, let's calm down there. I think the nicest point here will be the record button. Nice contrast there. And we're gonna change the size of this. So we're gonna bring our window and these windows control what we're looking for. So everything in this hard line box is what we're tracking. Everything in the dotted line box is how, where we're looking for the tracker. And like so, once we have the tracker, like that, we're going to just track forward. And this is gonna go forward and track the footage, nice and easy. So now we have a beautifully tracked Ronin S. All we need to do now is with the tracker selected is change what the tracker does. So all we need to do is go up to this window here, change the operation to match move. And basically that means that anything we plug into this is going to match the tracking data, which is pretty simple. So if I was to add say a text node, nothing special, and we're gonna just call it a call out, and we plug that into the foreground of that, and we put it wherever we want. You'll see that if we play this back, very simple, follows the motion of the DJI Ronin S, which is fantastic, but we want to create a call out. So we're going to put this aside for now, we don't really need it, and we're gonna start building it. So the first thing we're going to start building is, I guess, the dot. Um, that the track call out starts from. So we're going to add a background. And with the background, we're gonna change the color to white. And we're also gonna change the alpha to zero. We do this because when we overlay this on top of the footage, we want everything that's black to be transparent so that we only get the, you know, the call out that we're creating. So that's why we change the alpha to zero. With the background selected, shift space again, we're gonna create an ellipse hit enter, and we're just gonna put this into the viewer like so, so we can see what we're doing. Now, as you can see here, that is quite big. We don't want it to be that big, we want it to be smaller, so we wanna change the scale. But as you can see here, as we scale the width or the height, it's gonna turn it into an oval shape. Fix that, we're gonna create an expression. Very simple, right click on either the width or the height, it doesn't really matter, hit expression, and then with the plus, we're gonna click the plus and drag it to width. And all that means is as we change the width, the height changes with it, and it just means we can create a nice simple circle. Now, from my experiments, I'd find that 02 seems to be a nice little starting point for that circle. And what we wanna do though is animate this on and off. So we're gonna start at the start of this animation, we're gonna hit a keyframe, we're gonna actually change it to zero. And we're gonna go forward a little bit, maybe, I don't know, five frames or so, nothing too special. And we're just gonna put that to the right size. And as you see here, now we have, if we was to hit play, we have our little circle that just pops up. Fantastic. 
nothing special. So next, what we want to create is the line. So we're going to, over here, shift spacebar, we're going to do background again. Same thing, white, same thing, alpha to zero. And we're going to create a mask paint tool this time. And this is going to help us create the sort of the line or the call out as it is. So we're going to go over here to the polyline stroke. And what that's going to let us do is click from the center of the circle, shift click over there and shift click over there. And what that shift clicking just gives us a nice straight line. And what we're going to do is put this in viewer one so we can see both things at once. Bit of a problem here is the line is really fuzzy and it's soft and it's a bit too thick. So we want to go into our brush controls in the inspector and we're going to bump the softness right down so we have a nice hard line stroke. And we're also going to drop the size down quite a fair bit, right? We just want a nice simple line, nothing too spectacular. So with the line created, the next thing we need to do is animate it. So we're gonna go down here to stroke controls and we have our right on animation. This is the simplest way for us to animate this. So we're going to drop it to zero, we're gonna set a keyframe and we're gonna go forward maybe, I don't know. So we started at 31, I think maybe 10 frames, we're gonna to go to 41 and we're just gonna write the whole thing on like so. And so if I was to play this animation back, you can see here that it writes is the dot comes and the line comes very, very nice. All right, the next bit to this is the text. This is the last part and then we can start merging it all together and creating our full call out. So again, over here, we're gonna hit shift space and we're gonna create a text node, just a text plus. And for this, we're just, let's, I don't know, call it Ronan S. And we can change the font if we want, you know, it's not too important. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to position it above the line. And we can actually do our uh, quick merge here now. So with the, we're gonna create a merge node by hitting shift space, hitting merge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the mask paint into the background and the text into the foreground. And if I put the merge into the second viewer, now we can see everything as so. So now we're gonna animate the text, all right? That's the next thing that we want to do. So with the text tool selected, we're gonna hit shift space and we're gonna add a rectangle node, which is a mask. And as you can see here, it kind of blocks off the text. So we're gonna reposition that over the Ronin S and then we're gonna change the width and the height to encompass it. And this is how we're going to animate the text because what we can do now is we can move it in and out and make it appear as though it's coming from nowhere. So with the text tool selected, we're gonna go over to this uh, modifier here, going to set a keyframe. And basically this is because we're at the end of the line. I'm gonna put it over to the side here. I'm gonna go forward maybe to maybe like 46. Not, this, we're not being too precise here. And we're gonna move it back into sight like so. And so now we have a little animation, the line comes on and the text appears perfectly. And what we might wanna do now is, and the last one is add a little bit of motion blur. That's just gonna make the effect look, you know, it's just gonna sell the effect just that little bit more. And we can do a few things here. If we wanna leave it on, what we could do is at the end of the animation here, we could maybe write it off. So we could do that, fly off. So now we have our animation on and off. Once it's flown off, we could probably grab our mask paint and go down to where we write on, hit another keyframe and write that off like so. So now we're writing all our animations on and off. And if we go back to the ellipse tool, we could probably set a keyframe there and have that disappear to zero as well. So now everything is animated on and off. Very, very simple. All right, so now we're gonna merge everything together so we have it in one nice little package. So we're gonna create another merge tool over here, shift space, MRG to create merge. And we're gonna pump the ellipse into the yellow, which is the background. And we're gonna pump this one into the green, which is the foreground. And if we put that into viewer two, now we can see we have everything as such and it all animates on and off. Very, very, very easy. And the last thing that we need to do is pump the merge, this final merge into that tracker node. So all we do is grab the output into the foreground. And if we were to put the media out, now we have our 
tracked call out like so, and it follows everything. But there are a few more things we could do to finalize this animation. I mean, it works as such, but what if we wanted to move all of this around? Well, we can't because all the tools are individual. So what we wanna do is we're gonna disable that connection for now. And we're going to, with this final merge tool selected, shift space, we're gonna add a transform node, all right? What this allows us to do, if I put this into sight, is I can now control everything as one, which is gonna be really handy when positioning it around the tool. So if we pump the output of the transform node into the foreground, now with the transform node selected, I can position this wherever I want in the frame. Now, obviously it makes sense to have it probably there, but if I wanted to have it over there, I could, and it's still going to remain tracked to the footage, but what we could do is just position it like so on the record button, and now we have our tracked callout. Very, very easy to create. There are a few things we could do from here if we wanted to, which is we could control the animations of some of these tools. So if we were to open up the spline editor, this is where things get a little complicated. So we're gonna start with the text tool. So what we have here, if we fit to scale, is we have the text come in and then we have it go out. Very simple is we could just highlight all of those nodes and we could just ease them in and out like so. And we could probably just change that and change that so that it's a nice straight line and it still creates a nice effect. We can go through and do that for everything. So if we wanna do the polyline stroke, if we wanna fit everything, what we could do is have it ease in to that and then ease out as well, so, like so. And that will just create a little bit more of a believable animation, not as hard. And you can definitely see that at the start here, kind of eases out, just keeps it looking interesting. And you can play around with the curves like so until you get something that looks fun. But another thing we could do right at the end here is what I like to do is group all of this together. So control G, so now we have a group, all right? And we have the transform that controls the group. With these two selected, we could right click, settings, save all as, we can save this as an effect that we can reuse over and over again. So we're gonna just save it to the desktop for now. And we're gonna call this basic call out, let's call it number one. All right, so you could go through and create number two, number three, number four, and hit enter. Out of DaVinci Resolve, now we have our basic call out number one here. So we're gonna go into the finder, into applications. We're gonna go DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna right click, show package contents, contents, resources, fusion, templates, fusion. That is a long directory. It is more or less the same on a PC, except instead of going applications, you obviously go into program files. I'll leave it down below in the description so you can double check that. You don't have to go back and forth. But in here, this is where all our tools are kept inside of DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see here, I've created this folder here called callouts. Now grab our basic callout and then drop it into that callout folder. And that means when you come in here in Fusion, if you go to Effects Library, under Templates, you can see we have the Callout folder here, and this is where that Callout is going to belong. And that just means you can drag and drop this into Fusion whenever you want, doesn't matter. The one thing to keep in mind is that obviously we've animated this, so it's going to remain animated to the current timeline. So one thing to probably keep in mind is maybe you wanna create the tool first, keep this nice structure here that we've created. So if I was to, sh so create the call out, keep it to this structure that we've just done with the transform at the end and leave it like that and probably save it as such. That way you can animate it on a per project basis because at the moment, if we export this and import it into Fusion, it's gonna retain all that animation data, which is fine for this project, but probably not for something else. You're gonna to wanna to animate it specifically for that project, but up to you how you wanna do that. And like I said, we drag the transform into the tracker, move it around, maybe let's put it on the dial 
And if we go back into our editor, you can see here we have our nice animation as such that comes in like so. And there you have it, guys. Really easy call out animation to create inside of Fusion. So there you have it, guys. A really easy and simple to create effect that you can just have on hand whenever you need it. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of it and you know, keep adding suggestions as to what you want me to bring to you guys in terms of content. I do my best to bring what you guys ask. And until the next video, guys, see ya.